Hi everyone, my name is Holly and today is all about the books that deserve your attention in March of 2022. March is creeping up so freaking fast, so it is time to tell you about a slew of brand new stack of books that I am very excited to check out and read, and I hope you are as well. As always, we solely focus on fantasy, sci-fi, and horror here, both YA and adult. If you are new here and would like to have your TBR completely overflowing and want to be informed on what new books are releasing every month, then subscribe. We'd love to have you here. So March 1st is one of our biggest release days of the month and the first book is A Thousand Steps Into Night. Tracy Chi is very well known for her previous YA series called Sea of Ink and Gold. The first book was called The Reader, if that jogged your memory better, which released all the way back in 2016. I remember it circulating through booktube actually back in the day. Well, she is back with more beautiful covers. This is a Japanese-influenced YA fantasy which is brimming with demons and adventure and it follows a main character after experiencing some very bad events somehow gets in contact with a demon which therefore leads her into transforming into a demon as well and she starts turning blue and her goal is to find a way to reverse this curse to turn back to normal with of course a lot of her plans going awry definitely a plot focused on fixing her mistakes throughout a more quest-like adventure it really sounds like a beautiful world has been written here. Gallant. This is V.E. Schwab's newest project and it'll be gracing bookstores and libraries very soon. I'm sure a lot of you are very highly anticipating this as she is an incredibly well-known author. This is a YA novel that mixes the genres of horror and mystery and is about a young orphan named Olivia who one day gets a letter saying that her family has found her. Well, she goes to meet them and really weird things begin to happen as she finds out the letter she received was was from someone who passed away a year prior. Um, this one does involve some heavier topics and sounds like a worthwhile story if you want something darker, which is my jam. Olivia can even see ghosts and monsters, which adds an even more twisty element. And I think it sounds like a great read for all ages, honestly, especially with the um, more darker tone it has. All the Horses of Iceland. This one honestly sounds like a very magical and charming read. Very out of my element, but I still wanted to mention it because it really piqued my interest, especially at the word Iceland. To be more specific though, it is a historical fiction fantasy novella. It takes place in the 9th century following an Icelandic trader searching thousands of miles for horses to bring home. As the cover kind of suggests, our characters run into bandits, um, possible magicians, ghosts, battlefields, all so they can reach their end goal. It sounds like a very fable-like tale full of a whimsy-inspired atmosphere. Sundial. This is a horror book coming from Tora Nightfire, and the cover to this one is super rad and very eye-catching. I think a lot of you horror fans out there are excited about this one. It follows a woman named Rob and she lives with her kids and her husband living a pretty normal life, but she is not only terrified that her secrets from her hometown, Sundial, might be revealed, but also her eldest daughter who collects tiny bones, whispers to imaginary friends, you know, typical kid stuff. <laughs> it reminds her of the people in Sundial, whatever that means. That plot is very intriguing. It definitely feels very um, typical thriller inspired with like the nice family trope, but they have a dark, deep hidden secret. So keep a lookout for this one on March 1st. Moving right along to March 8th, we have A Far Wilder Magic. This is a new YA fantasy coming from the author who wrote Down Comes the Night, which a lot of people loved last year. And this one is definitely following the same line in terms of romance, um, some darker qualities. This follows Margaret, who is an incredible sharpshooter, and she has to join ranks with an alchemist, who is basically a failed apprentice, to compete in a hunt which will ultimately bring her mother back. Um, it has a lot of potential to be a more charming read. I actually hope the story um, kind of carries the same vibes the cover gives me because that would be great. The Way Spring Arrives and Other Stories. This is a translated Chinese SFF anthology that I really wanted to include on this list because it sounds really interesting and maybe some of you will think so too. It actually says here on the cover that it is written, edited, and translated by a female and non-binary team. And I love that recently there's been a lot of effort
effort to bring in female non-binary Chinese authors into like the English-speaking world. Another similar release was Synopticon, which is also translated sci-fi from Chinese writers. I think that specific voice can be so fascinating to hear, so I'm really excited about this one. Then we have Last Exit. This author in the past has definitely given us a story worthwhile, so it's exciting to see something new from him. This is an urban fantasy type story that's kind of like um, The City We Became meets The Dark Tower. It follows a quest-like structure where our main character is able to travel to alternate worlds and she stopped doing it because of an unfortunate accident. And now her plan is to gather her friends who are like a band of misfits to save the world essentially and also a close friend. Um, this one sounds really compelling set in a modern world with some sci-fi twist and it's just all around, it sounds detailed as hell. On March 15th, we have A Carnival of Ash. This is a book that's coming from Rebellion Publishing. It's a very cerebral um, sounding novel with some light fantasy elements thrown in. It's set in a fictional Italian city that is said to be run by egotistical poets, and a young wordsmith enters the city hoping to like make his name, only to get caught up in like the strangeness of the city. You know, after describing this book um, out loud in person, it reminds me of Sin Lina Sins a little bit, which is a book for everyone and this one seems like it's running with that same polarizing stance. I know I can love these kinds of surreal books. I, I mean, Sin and the Sins is one of my favorite books of all time, so there's a good chance I'll enjoy this. When We Were Birds. Now, I am so happy to see this book being released out to the world very soon because I personally haven't read many books taking place specifically in Trinidad and Tuboygo, and that is where this book is centered. It follows a family who are a lineage of women who have lived on the same land for many years, which was formerly a plantation, and the matriarch of this family helps souls pass when they die. And we follow another character who does everything in his power to avoid death. So we definitely get to see like two sides of the same coin, which is really interesting. It sounds really deep and impactful. I have this one sitting on my Kindle, so it's very tempting to read. Moving on to March 22nd, we have The Bone Orchard. This is an adult fantasy mystery mix, and the way this book is being marketed is really interesting. Intriguing. It sounds like a more darker gothic whodunit mystery. Plus, I am always ready for a book that mentions necromancy. It follows Charm, who's the dying emperor's concubine, and while he's laying in his deathbed, he charges her to find out which one of his sons is responsible for his death. So, of course, this book handles some heavier themes, including like sex workers, abuse, all that stuff, but I've heard a lot of fantastic things about it so far, and I'm really looking forward to it. The City of Dusk. So this is one of my most anticipated releases of the year, actually, that I'll be reading in March, and I think we are in for one heck of a fantasy experience, and I'm crossing my fingers that it exceeds my expectations because this is Tara Sims' debut adult book, and we all know her writing is very beautiful and detailed from her YA books. So I can't wait to see what kind of flavor we get here. Also, this is a pretty chunky fantasy following multiple kingdoms at beef with one another and the heirs to those kingdoms. And I'm absolutely looking forward to dumping a lot of my time into it. I have talked about this one a lot and I will be talking about it again soon. I'm going to leave it at that. Kingdoms of Death. So fans are going to be very excited for this one, I think, as this is the fourth installment in the Sun Eater series. Um, it's an epic saga spanning centuries and galaxies where humanity must fight against imminent destruction. This series has been deemed one of the best ongoing sci-fi series as of right now, and that's just really crazy here. The very basic premise of it is kind of written like a memoir, I guess, of sorts, following Hadrian Marlowe, who is famous and infamous for certain acts throughout his lifetime. He wants to be a scholar and explore the universe, so he sets himself on a path to change the course of history. Again, um, that's the bare minimum of the story. It involves so much philosophy on war, and the scope is enormous. Also, the cover art to the series. So cool. Um, this one's no exception. So on March 29th, we have a finale on our hands, and that is The Bloody Throne. This is the conclusion to the Hostage of Empire trilogy, and first off, I really like the unique approach with this cover. It's very different that it focuses on like a decor-like object instead of a person or a landscape or like a symbol, like a crown or something. There's something about that that is ballsy. It makes me like it even more. Um, anyways, this is a medieval East Asia-inspired 
inspired story. And the first book essentially follows a series of princes who are fighting for the throne. So I can only assume that this finale is going to be explosive. So if you haven't started this series yet, um, it will now be complete and a perfect binge read for spring. And then we have Sweep of Stars. This is a book that I feel like you just might accidentally miss and I would not, especially if you were a big sci-fi fan. This is the first book to a new sci-fi space opera series called Astro Black and it explores an epic empire within an African-inspired world. This is also a debut, which is really exciting, but I believe he has also written in some short fiction, so it's not his first time on the road. <laughs> when I first came across this book, it had been described to me as Black Panther meets The Expanse, and that is one hell of a way to get me to read your book. Um, the cover already gives us a look at what the world might look like, and I personally love covers that do that. So fingers crossed, it's a good one. A Magic Steeped in Poison. So if this is the first book to a YA duology from another debut author. I think this is a really interesting idea for a YA story. It follows a family who brew magic teas, which comes in our main character, Ning, whose mother passes away because of a tea she brewed that was poisonous, and it is also threatening her to take her sister's life. So when she hears about a competition where she can find the greatest master of magical tea making, she enters, which of course involves lots of politics and backstabbing and probably a romantic love interest. So if all of that sounds cool, add this one to your TBR. And finally, we have Wild and Wicked Things. So this is a new book coming from Orbit Books that I'll be reviewing soon actually in my February wrap up, so stay tuned for that. But this is a historical fiction witchy magical realism story that takes place after World War One, and the author has taken the idea of the prohibition and added a a magical element to it. It actually states that it's heavily inspired by the great Gatsby with a slower paced LGBTQ plus romance. I can attest to that. This book just truly spews everything witchcraft and women who are trying to hold their control of it. So if that sounds like up your alley, this one releases on March 29th. So that is all I have for you today. Leave me a comment and let me know what new books you are looking forward to. Um, which ones will you be picking up to give it a try? I'd love to know. If if you like this video give me a thumbs up it really helps me out a lot and if you're new now is a great time to subscribe as always thank you so much for watching this video and until we meet again happy reading